Today we're going to test a 12 gauge projectile prototype called the Black Scarab. This is the 23rd design by Evan Perry who is kind of the Kelly Johnson of 12 gauge projectiles. Unusual shapes, really weird materials, and he has a very good understanding of supersonic aerodynamics. I think every slug should have a really cool name that you can remember. We're going to call this the Black Scarab because it kind of looks like a scarab, right? The slug is made out of pot metal, believe it or not and is chemically blued to give it that nice deep black color. Typically a 12 gauge slug weighs one ounce, but these are some pretty hefty boys coming in at 36 grams, 1.28 ounces or 558 grains. Pick your unit. Now the basic shape of this I would call the elongated Diabolo shape. It's that wasp waisted pellet rifle shape. Evan's design is completely solid. There's no uh, hollow skirt at all. The Diablo shape is really interesting because it doesn't need spin to fly straight through the air. And we're not just talking about subsonic velocities, we're talking about pretty high velocities of over 1,000 miles per hour. That's over Mach 1.33. We'll use 35 grains of long shot, an FS-12 gas seal, and we'll have plenty of room in this 2 and 3 quarter inch hole. For these tests, we'll be using a four-pedal Sabo system. The Black Scarab is 68 caliber, and the Sabos fill that space and keep the projectile centered in the barrel. And they also protect the barrel from metal-to-metal -metal contact. Well, let's head out to the range and see if Evan's new design flies as good as it looks. Welcome back, Tau Flater folks. Jeff, Brandon, Officer Greg, and special guest, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead and come on over here. Jeff joins us from Alaska. Came all the way down just today. That's crazy. Not quite, no, but okay. uh, originally from Alaska. Evidently, Jeff and Brandon called each other and uh, coordinated their colors. So um, we have brought you today a round, another round by Evan Perry. By the way, I'm yelling because Jeff asked me to project my voice for the windy camera. So uh, <laughs> Evan Perry, you know him, you love him. He's in Texas and he hand makes these rounds for us. This one's called the Black Scarab. Sounds pretty That's scary. That's not what he called it, but I can't remember what he called it. But, but it's it. a pretty badass name, right? The Black Scarab. So we're gonna fire the Black Scarab today and see what it does. Uh, Jeff's gonna show you on the tabletop, so I'm not gonna repeat myself. Repeat <laughs> you can. Jeff. I'm not gonna repeat Jeff's self. Um, we won't show you too much about what the Black Scarab looks like uh, until you see it on the tabletop, but Brandon's waiting for us to shoot him downrange. Our guest shooter today, Jeff, is going to fire all the rounds for you, so we might actually hit something today because I'm not on a gun. So, uh, and in fact, if you guys want, because I mean you, oh. you, uh, you guys dressed alike, we could just swap the, the X back and forth. I, I like it right now. All right, let's go with that. All right, enough yapping, yapping, let's get to it. Okay, you, may, you admitted something to us that you never shot at slug before. Correct. I've never shot a slug before. That was my first slug, and uh, I felt it. It, was good. <laughs> it wasn't bad. Shoulder steer with you? Oh yeah. All, All right. good. Good. Ready for more. This is one of the first things we noticed was the big piece of vest blew out a hole in the t-shirt. This is just from the vest waggling around underneath the t-shirt. That's how much energy is being tossed out, but. If you look through the actual bullet hole here, Ooh. look at that. Let's, let's get this out of the way. Oh, no, no, you can leave it. Well, it's, it's not doing us any good. There you go. There it is, the black scarab. And w here's what's weird. I saw that on camera when I was review reviewing it. The, the gas seal didn't come off of it. See, there's not much holding it on there, but the gas seal yeah. stayed attached for some reason. Put it out there so you can film it. Now if you look close, you can see the cone-shaped shock wave of the slug. Now the slug will kind of bounce around a little bit in that shock wave. That's why you see it bobbling around, but it is self-correcting. And the accuracy overall wasn't too bad, especially for a guy that never shot a 12-gauge slug before. This shows you how violent an impact on a Kevlar vest is when hit with a large projectile. The Kevlar vest kind of poked through the t-shirt like it was made out of tissue. Next, we'll take a look at why the gas seal didn't release from the slug. We could see that the base of the slug not only compressed, but it also expanded to the same size as the bore. This is called obtuation. 
and I didn't expect it to occur with this harder metal. This happens almost instantly when the shell is fired, and it gives you an idea just how much force is being applied to the slug when it's fired. Okay, lead plate. We'll blow it up and whenever you're ready. In this shot, the gas seal did release, so we know that the slug flies pretty well on its own. But boy, I kind of sucked at getting the focus right on this one. But you still get an idea how the slug flew. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Here's the fan favorite, the lead plate. See that uh, it's hitting low and to the left, pretty similar to what happened to Doug. So we're having a little bit of consistency. I don't know if that's a fluke or that's actually me. That's a good way to think about it, yeah. But uh, it's... Uh, it dug in there pretty deep. It destroyed the black scarab in the process. And if you want to take a look at the back. Ooh, okay. Oh, it, uh, I can't stick my finger through it, but it's, uh, it's got a pretty good uh, impact there. A little spalling going yes. on there. That's the Almost spalling like, is, is and the all, the, all, all the, the tank, backside. world of tank people know what spalling is. Yeah. The gun people don't know what spalling is. Spalling is when you get debris flaking off the back of a piece of armor or, or lead plate in this example. I thought know? it was the company that made tennis balls. Oh, oh yeah. Spalding. <laughs> oh, Spalding. Damn it. Spalding. Going for the jigsaw. Is, it, or is that the right name for it? That is a jigsaw. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Oh. Got it. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Oh. Well, the gas seal, just like in shot one, again, stuck to the base of the slug. But it sure looks like Jeff has figured out where to hold the point of aim on these things. After analyzing the first two shots, we decided to finally make an adjustment to the aim, and it seemed to pay off this time. Jeff will explain more in a second. Well, the first two shots that I took, I kept hitting consist consistently left and low. So today, on, or on this shot, I was aiming right up here. And sure enough, left and low, got her right in the black and decker. <laughs> Look at the back side oh. here, and it shot right through that armature. That's, I couldn't have asked for a better shot placement yep. than that. It, uh, it did a really good job there, tearing right through there. We looked and looked, but we couldn't find the slug. <laughs> there may not be much of it left. No. So, that's you know, good. So far, this is, uh, they're not gonna want it's been you to shoot consistent. anymore. And that's fine. I got plenty of other things to do. I got my professional modeling career. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple of bands I need to start and oh, then, yeah. then quit. <laughs> well, that's great. These things well, are. Didn't you have a band called Black and Decker? Yeah, one time? Black and Decker. Black and Decker. We, we did all soul music, mostly Detroit, like doo wop stuff. Um, so it was a little racist, so we actually scrapped that one. There you go. But, uh, I've got a. I've got a a uh, unauthorized autobiography to write. Oh. So many things to do. Unauthorized. Oh my god. Now that you've mastered the smoothbore and know where it's hitting, we're gonna throw you all off and give you a different gun. Yep, looks like I'm gonna shoot the Remington uh, rifled barrel. Um, 870. 870. There you Remington go. 870. <laughs> we don't and give them any notes or anything. There you go. It's like, hey, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so full rifling, we'll give it spin, see if that Mix these any better. Using full rifling this time, the slug looks completely different in flight. In the shots with the smoothbore, the slug looks pretty awkward with the supersonic waggle, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's less accurate. The tail kind of pivots around, but the nose is essentially flying straight still. Now, Jeff didn't have to make any corrections in his aim on this shot. It was pretty much uh, close to point of impact on this shot. Put a tarp down. Exactly, it would have caught all of the coke. Yeah. And then you could have drank it all, I guess, right. with a straw. Yeah, if you so like that. This was a big coke, a bigger coke explosion than an Elton John dinner party. <sighs> Look over here on that one. Yeah. It's got a little piece of shrapnel and it drained the can. It's a Ooh. 
Yeah, a little piece of shrapnel right Cam's there. Cam's mostly intact, but empty. It was a good shot, though. He, he seems to do really well at those sites and with rifling. So yeah. you're saying that rifling did, in fact, make it, everything it made, better? In this case, it, maybe it did. Oh, I don't believe well, the have, chronograph, though. We have 3, one more shot to figure second. it out. Yeah, let's try it on toast. Uh, now, okay, now, now he's all cocky and everything. No. It's, it's, <laughs> I want it, it, you have, it has to be repeatable or else it's not genuine. It's not science. I know. That's yeah. right. It's, you can't say it's precise we didn't or bring accurate lab, or... Didn't bring the lab coat out either, so... Right. Oh, science. that makes it... It's not even science. Makes it more scientific. Right. Okay, let's try the 40 yard shot. You feel comfortable enough with the with that last shotgun? For a I mean, 40 yard shot. It, yeah. I mean, you said I hit it right on. You did. With you my, did. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's put this into perspective. Jeff thought he was just going to hang out with Greg and myself and watch us film a, a new video. He had no idea that he was going to do all the shooting and shooting a weird prototype slug at 40 yards. I think he did pretty well, folks. Now I'm looking at last week's shots with the same gun and this one, and it looks like we may need to adjust the sights a little bit on this gun. High and to the left. It was like the exact spot that Greg hit it on his first shot. Or same, rif or, uh, same rifled barrel from the same shotgun, same exact distance, and uh, one week later. Completely different slugs, and different velocities, yeah. different weights, and... But consistent failure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you hit it, you officially hit the jug. Yes, oh. All right, Jeff is still using the rifle shotgun with the iron sights, and he did really well. Nice centered shot there, it looks like. Now, I'm sure you saw that very large temporary wound cavity extending almost the entire length of that 16-inch block. Now, I've been kicking around the idea of, like, wrapping the ballistic gel with duct tape or uh, baling wire or sticking inside of a pant leg to show how much force there is when that block of gel expands. And I'm also starting to do some research to see if Plastisol would be a good alternative to clear ballistic gel. Yeah, that was a good shot. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so. Yeah, you know something sixth, sticking in the gel yeah, there. Sixth and uh, final shot into the ballistic gel. I'm sure you saw uh, the couple of the century going flying off here. And uh, it was a little bit to the left, but it is a clean hole, and you can see way in there. Really? Holy cow! Yeah, it's you really. Let me sticking things in there. Can you like see no. the future? Uh, it's almost. patented. And this right here, we're trying to figure out what it is. Could be a piece of sabo or something. Or... It's not a piece of sabo. Oh. It's a piece of washer. Oh man, what is and going on with these things? Yeah, it totally ripped the back end of it off. Oh man. So speaking I might have of to the buy back Greg end, a new barrel. Here's here's the slug. Um, stayed together for the most part. We caught it in the vest. It did, uh, well, it punched the vest. We actually thought it went straight through the vest and into the jug because we saw a big splash. What it, what it actually did is hit the vest so hard, punched out the back, and it just punched the, the, yeah. uh, the vest, punched the yeah, jug. Yeah, turn that around. It, where did it punch it at? Oh, okay. Yeah. See the hydrostatic shock? Punched it, and just the pressure of the water tore that edge. Interesting. Yeah, nothing, and then nothing actually penetrated. And it didn't slow, so the gel didn't slow it down much. No, nope, did not. And it actually kind of curved in there. It's kind of crazy. It came out damn near dead center, and that left some remnants in here, of more of the uh, the tail end of it. Oh wow. So, See, we just wash it off. That's yeah. all you do, folks. No, wait a second. What if you had a tarp? Or then we'd have to wash the tarp off yeah. and then the gel block too. Yeah, huh. or we could just spend three whole seconds rinsing off the gel block. Yeah, uh, that's Evan the black scarab. It, uh, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, shot someone who had never shot a slug well. before. And uh, I think that's the that's going to be the name of uh, Dwayne Johnson's next movie, The Black Scarab. <laughs> black scarab. So, <laughs> the new Dwayne. Marvel mystery. Oh, wait, it's Black Adam. So, oh. we might get uh, copyrighted now. <laughs> Sorry. So, there you go. I mean, rinse the gel off and it's all good. There's all kinds of debris. That might be yeah. the gas seal right there. That's it. That's it. All well, six hey, rounds. Thank you very much. Only took us two hours or something, two and a half uh, hours. You guys having me out? I yeah. Last. Um, how'd you how'd you make this happen? You know, it, it was did crazy. you email I, somebody? Yes, I did. Uh, 
mid last week I was watching a uh, a different channel, the OG Danger Show. What? And uh, I've heard of that one. I nobody happened to uh, look that, in the show. Isn't that I Paul Harrell or something? In the description that? and saw his email in there. I'm like, you know what? I'm just uh, an hour away down in Bakersfield. I'm gonna send him a message and see if I'll buy him a cup of coffee or something. And we're, you don't even need to buy him a cup right. of coffee. Yeah. Though. Behold, that, we're that cheap. Lo and behold, he responded within 30 minutes and uh, said uh, that would be great. Come on up and maybe we'll set up a shoot. And we next still didn't thing get I know, coffee. Yeah, still didn't get coffee. <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to be next time. Got I, some I, I can't stop putting my finger in this. <laughs> Isn't that, see, it's addictive. Uh, it right? is addictive. <laughs> I'm gonna get an right. finger Well, insert. I just want to officially say, Greg, Jeff, thank you very much for having me out. It was uh, great. It was I mean, blast. people I, always ask, you know, yeah. like, people live around here, and, and that's all you have to do is just contact yeah. Greg. If you try to contact me, I'll probably forget. Super great guys. Plus. Recommend you. <laughs> you know, we'll make it happen. You can be on. You can be in a video too. You know. Awesome.